As is often the case with me, I've decided to start this in the middle instead of the beginning like any normal person would. Uh, what I've got here is uh, an Amiga 600 that I picked up a few weeks ago now. Uh, it wasn't in good shape at all, which was one of the reasons it was a lot cheaper than they're generally going for at the moment. It wasn't really my intention to start work on it, in fact it wasn't even my intention to, to get hold of an Amiga 600. I'd thought about it for a while and dismissed it. But I spotted this, obviously I couldn't resist or I felt sorry for it. And it occurred to me I was going to be going to the next swag meet which was in January. I thought well let's see if we can try and get this up and running and take it along as a second machine. Because it's nice to have a couple of machines and you know, have one set up for people to go on. Unfortunately this turns out to have been a lot more problematic than I was expecting. And I know it wasn't in great shape but there was no real reason to suspect any sort of faults as such. Now I can't say I've exactly gone about anything I've done in particularly the right way. I, I tried a couple of things because really this is the first time I've had a proper go at doing a repair. I've obviously taken quite a few Amigas apart and other things on, on video but they've just then ended up getting boxed and put on one side and really that's not really what I want to keep doing so in some respects getting on with this hasn't been a bad thing because it's forced me to sort of make some progress and actually try and get something fixed and, and move on. When I went through the sort of clean up process of this thing I practically drowned it in white vinegar and IPA. Not entirely sure whether the drowning it in white vinegar was a good or a bad thing but it has helped clean it up significantly. Uh, there was quite a bit of not so much corrosion but a lot of dirt and rust and stuff everywhere. The, there's a lot of points where you can see it's quite dulled. I have to say having a go at this has really given me some appreciation for some of the other people's videos I've watched, particularly uh, Gadget UK's videos because he does a lot of very good close-up work with the camera as he's explaining what he's doing and actually doing it and it's been hard enough just working on some of this stuff and never mind trying to actually get the camera to focus on the right bits and get a decent close-up shot which to be honest I'm not entirely sure I've done a great job of that. But as you'll see I've removed the keys on this but sort of the the muck and the state of the side of this is a, a fair indication as to what to expect with this one. Anyway, let's make a start. So I don't know when this is going to get put into a video. This is something I've received relatively recently. It's one of those things where I probably shouldn't actually have bothered buying it because this is actually in quite a bit of a state. But I, I guess I sort of felt a bit sorry for it and I made an offer on it and the offer was accepted so that was that really. Uh, as it stands you can't really see too much wrong with it. But as we go on things will uh, become fairly clear as to how much of a state this thing's in. Now I know it was a state before I bought it and there were some pictures of the insides. Uh, it was quite well described what was missing and that it was a, a bit of a mess. Um, not quite sure where it's been but I keep getting what looks like soil or something coming out so it could have either either been somewhere outside or it's been in a loft and it's it's all the muck from perhaps the old roofing felt or something like that. It's the only thing I can think. So let's have a look. I know there was no screws in this uh, but it looks like they've taped it together just to get it here and you can see there's all this I start to see now that this is not looking so good. Well, in terms of yellowing, it's got a little bit on it here and there, but overall it's not that bad. Um, you can see it's uh, a bit of a state. There's no floppy disk drive in it. Uh, I was curious what the ports on the side were like. It's a bit of green on some of these pins here, but I know the ones on the back are really in a very bad state. These are absolutely awful. I mean that's so rusted up I doubt anything would even plug into that one. The uh, disk drive one, the video port, they've all got green on and the screws, the modulator. So it's a bit of a state but I did have some projects in mind where it may be a case that I just use the board as, as it seems to be the case with most of my projects or at least the, the ideas that I have initially that result in me buying the things. So. Let's get all this tape off and see what we can find. No surprise, a bit of rust on the shielding. <laughs> no surprise. I think this tape's been added on before it's been shipped because it wasn't on in the pictures. That's, I mean, even look at the state of the, the tape itself. 
I'm going to need to sweep or hoover once I've, I've done this. I'm not sure if the 600's got a battery on board or not. I've got a feeling that it doesn't have, and that, again that's something on the memory expansion, like it was on the 500. But then the 500 Plus did have one, so I don't know. I really can't remember. So the casing's not too bad, it's, I mean there's a scuff there, but generally I think it's mostly dirt. I mean, if you've got the original plastic cover on there, the plastic wrap cover. Uh, it's not actually too discoloured. There doesn't appear to be any cracks or anything, so it'll be interesting to see how well that cleans up. So yeah, the back of this is a bit of a state. I'm not sure. The flex looks to be in good order. So there should still be contact there. But it's just full of this muck, this dust. So it definitely looks like it's been in a a loft or something. I'd even say it's been in a loft perhaps opened up and then put away. Now we've got some screws here and looks like a crystal oscillator so if that's ah so that's come off and that's come off of the board and that should be here so why that's come off of that's been physically damaged. Yeah, it's nothing very good shape this thing. Might as well remove the power cable. I've never actually um, had anything to do with an A600 before so there's a lot of corrosion on this down here as well. It's sort of going green but I don't think this is um, battery damage. I think it's just general corrosion from being exposed to all this Gunge and probably probably some humidity, maybe even have got wet at some point. So it may be that because this has got this open slot that the muck's got in through there and through the top. I'm not sure what the, the normal procedure to get one of these out would be. Because there's no room to manoeuvre that way. So we've got some screws there at the top. I don't know what they're normally for. There's an Appear to be anything that would be screwed in unless that's um, perhaps that's where the floppy drive screwed on the underside I to guess yes yeah, so I've got a, a floppy drive here so it looks as though that would perhaps be attached on those there sort of like that just to hold it into the case obviously a, a way of saving space I do feel that these need to come up first I think that's the, the trick with this. Yeah, there we go. And then that can lift out. And then there's the, the bottom casing. So well, there's a bit of muck under there, but as bad as it could, this is going to be uh, interesting. Yeah, so it's rusted up as expected. It's all around the edges as well. And look at that. That's terrible. You can't see that because of the focus, but. Yeah, that's just it really is quite rusted up badly that. So I'll see if we can get this back plate off and have a look at the underside of the board. So I don't know where the appropriate sized hex uh, bit is, nor do I know where the screwdriver is. I suspect that both of them are together from probably the last time I did this. So I'm going to have to see if I can make do with this bar and uh, this bit, which I think is near enough the right size. See these are harder to, to get the screwdriver into because they're, I think it's because they're the male pinned ports rather than these with the, the holes so the, the nut rides closer to the edge of the connector. So these are a nice tool for jobs like this. They're uh, parallel pliers, as you see, as you close them up, the jaws close mostly parallel to each other, unlike your normal sort of pliers where you can see they close at an angle. So these are quite good for things like this because you can get a decent grip and you're also much less likely to do any damage because you're not, with these, because of the angle you can slip off, depending on how 
obviously this, something this size it's not so likely to slip off but it will chew the edges of the nut up not that I think I'll be reusing these to be honest because they're they're not in a good uh, state at all it does seem with these once they've been loosened it's possible to then get the um, socket set bit down down the side of the nut it's just they need that initial loosening I think what I'll do is bend all these tabs fully up so they're out of the way and they're not going to cause any damage when the board's extracted out it's just gripped on the edge of the um, the metal here so I think the same happens on the A500 okay so we've also got some screws here or a screw that should be some screws that also needs to be removed so it's that rusted up everything's sort of gripping uh, you can see under here there's obviously there's some damp or something collected there I mean yes it's pretty awful that uh, modulators fairly rusted up but there's no surprise with that being a flat piece of steel plate there this area here is quite bad as you can perhaps see it's very crusted up now whether this is just muck and sort of rust from the steel shielding whether there's more damage I don't know but I think it's going to need a good clean up to find that out and well I mean the underside is not looking too bad at all really a bit of muck and that but in all honesty I mean that's looking good surprisingly good so it seems just to be more the areas that have been exposed so as you can see the ports which are not the best the um you can probably see this pin here that's all going green and these are here they could be cleaned up to some extent whether you know if i can replace them i will there must be surface mountable ports available like this so something like that would make sense to replace it and some of these the problem with these is the 23 pin sockets for the floppy drive and the I think that's the floppy drive and the video port with that one they're not so easy to get hold of now and where you can get hold of them people are trying to charge a hell of a lot for them for what they are but they're difficult to get hold of so there's a lot of muck collected up around the legs of some of these chips as well so I think really this thing needs, needs initially a good clean down to try and assess what's going on here and what the damage is and obviously these ports here just need a good clean out at the back as best they can be and this looks like it could be some kind of seed or sawdust so I mean this this could have been in a shed or anything who knows it's definitely somewhere like a loft or a shed or a, maybe a an old garage or something yeah certainly not somewhere it should have been stored that's for sure um, pins in the PCM slot don't look too bad is it PCM PCM CIA oh, I don't know I forget or is it CF is that CF I don't know yeah they've got a bit of green on them I think you can buy replacements of these sure I've seen them whether it's necessary I don't know because I don't know where that would be useful um, obviously we've got IDE here uh, oh, these pins look bent as well on the end here in fact that pin is decidedly breaking off yeah so that's been knocked about before and it's yeah that's that's now snapped off so 
that socket's probably going to need, or that pin head is going to need replacing, then, which is going to be interesting because it's quite small. Yeah, yeah, another another bag of problems that I've got no idea why I bought. Uh, with respect to the the actual keyboard, I don't think that's that's screwed in. Uh, yeah, there's a couple of places where that's attached. I think it's attached here. But generally, it appears that it's not. No, I've just had a sneezing fit because of all the dust. Uh, this keyboard also is looking a little bit rusted up. It does appear to be attached in a couple of places to the case, and I think I don't know where it's normally attached. If it's just that one, is it that screw? Or I think that's just a clip. It's very well clipped in, as you can see it's quite rusted up on this steel plate here. Now this could also, again this could be cleaned up, something like this, it wouldn't be too big of a job. Sanded up, cleaned up and probably a coat of black paint or something, spray paint. Definitely need something. Um, some of the keys I took try them and they were sticking. I don't know what state any membrane or anything is going to be in here, but I think at this stage it's probably best not to take this bit apart just yet. Start with the um, the main board and work from there really. Yeah, so not a very happy A600 this one. So just a bit of an observation here, I was just really just putting this stuff away just to forget about it for the rest of the day. and. Uh, Think about what I'm going to do with it and I've noticed um, a mark on here and I just initially thought oh that's rust and then when I sort of looked at it a bit more I thought oh that actually looks almost like a burn mark and the plastic doesn't feel like it's humped up or anything or like it's got hot but it's definitely it's just got that look to it so I thought well let's have a look what's there on the board and um, when that's lined up you get something around the area where this capacitor is here. Now if I look on the other side, you might be able to see this, it depends if we get enough zoom. But this here, which I think is a resistor, this is definitely burnt out. Uh, I'm not sure if that's going to show too well on the camera or not. Yeah, that's... Um, that's definitely dead. It's definitely got hot and burnt out. It's all discoloured around here. The board's dark and it doesn't look like it's got so hot it's damaged the board itself, but that resistor's definitely, definitely buggered. I didn't notice that, so it just goes to show that it is a good idea to just take the time and just literally look gradually over the whole board for anything that looks wrong and, and obviously something like that on this uh, plastic inlay is a, an indication that there's other issues that need dealing with so uh, I'm not sure is that the yeah so that's the serial port which does have a a couple of power a sort of power outputs on it so I assume that that's probably for one of those pins and it's uh, either drawn too much or something shorted out at some point. So yeah, that will definitely need replacing.